Julia, a U.S. Congressional Committee has called for restrictions on the business of Huawei, which is China's probably the world's largest telecoms equipment manufacturer. What's at the root of this? Well, it's, it's hard to um, really come to the bottom of this as to whether it's protectionism or whether it really is a security threat. But basically, the, this um, U.S. Congress Committee um, is worrying that um, this telecoms equipment makers, both Huawei and ZTE, are posing a threat to um, national security in the U.S. Um, but you could argue that it's also to do with um, potentially not wanting them to give them access to this market. There's a huge market in the U.S. And does the U.S. have a point? Is there any precedent of ghosts in the machine or anything in other countries where Huawei operates? Where else has it got big government contracts? Well, they have a point to a degree that it is communications, and you could argue that that's a sensitive area. So if they're putting down networks across the country, they have access to potentially a lot of information. But Huawei has been given access to every other market, so they're really quite big in Europe now. Um, they're doing a lot in the UK. Um, so in terms of the way they're being treated elsewhere, it, it's not the same. Um, there is some argument that Huawei hasn't done itself any favours. They're not a listed company, um, and there's quite a lot of. I was going to say, would 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 it, would it be perhaps as much as anything to do as much as to do with being to do with protectionism? Could it be to do with the fact that it has very poor visibility as a company? We don't really know enough about it. Is that a, a fair criticism? Definitely. I mean, they're trying very hard now. I mean, they're engaging a lot with the the media for example, but in terms of their ownership structure, um, it's still rather opaque. Um, so Ren Zhongfei, so the current president and also the founder, once worked for the People's Liberation Army. Um, so people obviously put into question... Everyone has to start somewhere. Exactly. Well, quite. <laughs> it's one way to start. Um, so there's some argument that there are closer links to the US military. But there's also been um, ZTE, which is another Chinese um, company, also in telecoms equipment, which has been brought into this as well. And they are a listed company. So that kind of throws out of the window this argument that it's kind of opaque ownership structure. OK, so how should Huawei play it in the short term? I mean, they're not going to list overnight, are they? No, um, and they're, they're trying. I mean, so one, as I was saying, they're trying to engage more and trying to be kind of more transparent is number one. Um, they have looked into listing, but under current Chinese law, they have um, their own employees as shareholders, which limits them, Okay. Um, number two. And number three is they're trying to go into less sensitive areas. So they've grown their business in mobiles, um, but making white label mobiles um, in order to kind of be in less politically so, sensitive areas. So in the short term, at least, it looks very much as though this could play to the, the incumbents, such as Ericsson and other manufacturers, in the market, um, and it looks as though Huawei is going to have to think of more creative ways of engaging in the US. Thanks very much, Julia.